Okay, so previously we discussed about section 6. Right now we'll jump to section 21 and 22. The other provisions, well, you should have read it by now. Just read that, uh, those provisions. I've mentioned that earlier also, in the powers of the commissioner. Uh, but uh, I would like to discuss on section 21 and 22. But you just memorize section 21, the sources of revenue or internal revenues. The voidis, what are these? The VAT. The other percentage taxes, income tax, documentary stamp tax, excise tax, estate tax, and such other taxes. But uh, we'll discuss more on section 22. You familiarize yourselves with the definitions, especially paragraph B. So whenever you read paragraph B, you cross-read that with section 26. What is section 26? It's all about the general professional partnership. General professional partnership is not taxable entity in so far as income tax is concerned as provided by section 26. Who are liable for that? The, the professional partners. They're personally liable for the income tax of the general professional partnerships. But you have to, you have to know the difference. You should know by now the difference between a business partnership and the general professional partnership. Business partnership is treated as a corporation. Hence, it is subjected to 30% tax rate or the MCIT, whichever is applicable. Okay? And you take note of paragraph S. What is that paragraph S? Let's see. Ah, the trade or business includes, the term trade or business includes the performance of the functions of a public office. You know, uh, what they're doing business like kag what's that kawanihan ng rentas internas diba? you you remember the joke about the Tagalog I will not mention that here but uh, this is a funny definition right uh, ang lagay ba naman eh doon tayo sa tanggapan ko mag-usap but uh, okay we'll discuss about this one this paragraph why the meaning of deposit substitutes and the 20 lender rule as discussed in BDO versus Republic. What is that? The meaning of at any one time. Okay, let's see. Paragraph Y. The deposit substitute. The term deposit substitutes shall mean an alternative fra a form of obtaining funds from the public. The term public means borrowing from 20 or more individual or corporate lenders at any one time. So you remember classes as I've explained to you, businesses have different ways of obtaining funds. Like you, you obtain your fund from your capital, you obtain your fund from the banks, you borrow money from the banks, or you ma borrow money from the public. How? Well, uh, this one, you issue bonds, or the stocks. It's not actually borrowing money from the public or when you issue stocks, but it's an investment. But most, because this one, this, um, this, you remember the peace bond, right? There's the, the, the government issued peace bond, the controversial peace bonds before. You remember the coupon bond, right? the, the term coupon. Tepa palita ko coupon bond, there, 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 there's this coupon that you perforate to redeem that. But the meaning here is that deposit substitute, there's a meaning here, especially the 20 lender rule. And the meaning of at any one time here is provided in this uh, phrase, okay, or in this provision. At any one time, other than deposits, right? Thus, from the point of view of the financial market, the phrase at any one time for purposes of determining 20 or more lenders would mean every transaction executed in the primary or secondary market in connection with the purchase or sale of securities. When through any of the foregoing transactions, funds are simultaneously obtained from 20 or more lenders or investors, there is deemed to be a public borrowing and the bonds at that point in time are deemed deposit substitutes. So, if you 
or the company issues a bond and there are 20 investors at any one time, then consequently, the seller is required to withhold the 20% final withholding tax on the imputed interest income from the bond. Because if you remember, the, the, the government um, made a contractual tax exemptions here. And as, as provided in the video, there was a well, controversy there. But you have to remember or to understand what is the meaning of deposit substitute. Now, because in your section 24 and 27 about passive income, whenever you earn income from like deposits from the bank, the bank shall, you look at your uh, passbook, you have this uh, withholding tax, right? 20% whenever you earn interest. So that if the bond, if you issue or the company issue a bond and there are 20 or more lenders there or takers of the bond, then you, the company, must withhold the final withholding tax whenever there is an interest income for the bond. Because uh, the idea of the bond is you, okay, the, the bond, usually the, the company issues a bond like say for 1 million and you buy that only for like say 900,000 so you get to have 100 that, that's the form of interest so the 100,000 would be your interest after so many years or like so many months then normally it would not be classified or the company won't withhold the 20 percent the 100 20 percent of the 100,000 but if there are 20 or more takers of the bond, then it becomes what they call the deposit substitute because it is actually a borrowing from the public, right? So that's a deposit substitute already. So you remember that that's the meaning of deposit substitute and the 20 lender rule. As the Supreme Court said, for debt instruments that are not deposit substitute, regular income tax applies. It must be emphasized, however, that debt instruments that do not qualify as deposit substitutes under the NIRC are subject to regular income tax. The phrase, all income derived from whatever source in Chapter 6, particularly Section 32 of the 19 or the NIRC, discloses a legislative policy to include all income not expressly exempted as within the class of taxable income under our laws. We will discuss that later. But, uh, okay, we'll go through the other provisions here or the definitions. Uh, what are the others? Ordinary income, you should uh, read this. Rank and file employees, etc. This one, regional ed area headquarters and the regional operating headquarters. Regional area headquarters are ones that do not earn income. Okay, they, they're just there to what? To supervise communications, to facilitate. But for regional area operating headquarters means a branch established in the Philippines to operate the business. So they earn income. So the the regional or area headquarters of the RA HQ are not taxable, but the RO HQ are taxable. And may na lang wagini sila ni abot class o goal. I like this DD. Wala ka abot o KK o TT. Anto dra o HH. But the minimum wage earner, etc. Just browse through this class and uh, again, I will uh, repeat. The more important provision here is the deposit substitute. Okay, and uh, I think there was this um, uh, the definition here, which was okay, and also paragraph B, the term corporation. It includes partnership, except general professional partnership. Okay, so that's about it for section 22. We'll discuss section 23 and 24 next.